Shalom. Call Halola Yahweh by Hashem Yahushah, which means all praises to Yahweh, which is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who you people evidently call God. But Hashem in the name of Yahweh Shah, which is the name of the only begotten Son, who you people in the world evidently call Jesus Christ. Those are the true names that have been fallen in the Son. Plus, I want to give a shout out to the Akim that's pushing and spreading his word throughout the four corners of the earth, who's also uplifting the name Yahweh by Hashem Yahushah. Shalom to you, Akim, you brothers. Also to the Israelite foreigners, the speckled bird, man, woman, and child, whose bloodline traces back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers, though you may look like the heathen nations, you're scattered amongst, which, as you see on this chart right here, the heathen nations are the nations starting from two on down. Those are the heathen nations. Also, if your bloodline... Your lineage goes back to these people right here as seen on this chart through the man. And if your spirit bear witness with this word and this truth, you can receive it to the speckled bird, man, woman, the child. If this does apply, okay, to you, you are Israelites. Though you may look like the other nations you're scattered amongst the heathen nations due to the scattering of these people right here. You see on this chart, so you're going to have Israelites once again that look like the other nations, but they're Israelites because they're under curses of Deuteronomy 28 to 15 verse on down. Also, their spirit bear witness with this word's truth that they are the children of Yahweh by Shema Shah. And most importantly, once again, their lineage goes back to these tribes through the man. So if they have a heathen mother and they look completely like the heathen mother, but their father's an Israelite, that will make them an Israelite as well. Okay. To the few Akwaf, with your sisters that do listen and learn, Shalom. To the elect of the nation of Israel, whether they may be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth for this world is going out to, Shalom to you as well. You so called Negro, Latino, Native American. Once again, as you see on this chart, you combine consistent make up the 12 tribes of Israel. You are the Hebrew Israelites, the chosen people of the Most High, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son. You even call Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah, once again. And um, I'm going to play this video, which is uh, basically another famine update. And the famine, okay, is just getting, uh, uh, the, the, it's, it's building up. It's getting worse and worse and worse, okay? And this is not just a you know, a one, you know, a uh, uh, country that's being impacted is going to be the whole entire world. So I'm going to play this clip. And I got, like, another article. I got an article and I got another clip. And I'm going to get the scriptures and end it, you know. So. You probably should know about. During the last three decades, the world has lost 27% of its insects. Many of you may be... And real quick, why you think that is? Why you think you got you got? It's not just you know, you know insects because it's certain insects that you know you've seen like you know years and years ago that you don't see now. Like I know it's one thing is I hardly see butterflies anymore. You know, I hardly see you know bee bumblebees. I don't really see those too much anymore. I don't see really dragonflies because what it is is Esau. Okay. You know, Esau's, you know, doing this. It's all Esau eat them, okay? The so-called Caucasian race, okay? Starting with the Lee Banking families. They spread, you know, these chemtrails in the sky, the little white lines you see in the sky, these little planes they got flying. They spraying, spraying chemtrails in the sky, and what that's doing is getting on, for one, it's getting on the crops, it's getting on, you know, flowers, okay? It's destroying animals, you know, and, you know, we got the sea life, you know, animals in the sea, you know? They are uh, dying off due to, you know, oil spills in the ocean and uh, garbage all throughout the ocean. You got whales beaching themselves, seals beaching themselves, fish, okay, all types of just wild, you know, animal life, okay, just being destroyed under this man's rulership, okay? This is not just happening because it's happening. It's it's because it's you got a ruler, an unwise ruler in, in, in place, okay? He's doing this, okay? Nothing good could come out of Esau Edom. He's all deaf. But anyway. Wow, that's really interesting. And it is really interesting, but I'm here to tell you it's not just interesting. It's alarming. Extremely alarming. Why? Because it's insects through pollination that maintain the world's supply of fruits and vegetables. It's insects through decomposition that remove waste and at the same time fertilize the planet naturally without chemicals. 
joining us now to take this, uh, take us through this and explain uh, how it's happening is uh, RT correspondent Michelle Greenstein. Okay, what, what, what's killing off 27% of the in insects in the world? Well, the reason for insect decline in the past has been described as death by a thousand cuts, right? That's because there's not necessarily one specific reason, it's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. There are the more obvious things, right, like habitat destruction, right? The growth of cities is overall bad for insects because places that used to be natural habitats now no longer have those plants that insects eat, right? So we have things like bees, flies, butterflies, all being deprived of their mm. natural food base. So there's deforestation, forestation, there's habitat destruction, and then there's also things like pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides, right, which actually cause the central nervous system of the insect to break down, cause polaris. Uh and who, who is that? Okay. That's, that's Esau. Okay? It's none else but Esau eat them. Okay? She says it's not it's not one problem, it's many it's many problems. Well, no, it is one problem. It's Esau eat them, okay? All right, this is Psalms 58 and 1. It says, do ye indeed speak righteous? All right. Psalms 58 and 1 says, do ye indeed speak righteousness? O congregation, do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yeah, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Okay? This man, he works nothing but wickedness, man. Okay? It is a he is the problem. He's the number one problem, and deep down they know it. Okay, they know they know they behind all this. They know they're uh, uh destroying the planet. Okay, under their rulership, their governance. Really, they don't care. Okay, these are these elites. You know, they going forward with their agenda only because Yahweh by is letting them do it. So. Uh, paralysis and also death. Now, for this reason, a 2019 study that was published by Science Direct actually said that pesticides play a role in one eighth of all insect deaths, mm. and also that converting habitats into land for mass agriculture use is actually the leading cause, the main driver of these insect declines. Explain to the audience, if you would, what it is about insects that is so important to us, to right. our lives. Sure, well, this matters for humanity, like you indicated earlier because insects pollinate, right? They pollinate our fruits, their, our flowers, our vegetables, so things like butterflies and moths, right, pollinate a lot of this produce. In fact, over a third of the world food supply is from crops that are pollinated by insects, right? And about three quarters of flowering plants are pollinated by insects really? as well. Wow. That, and now also they're decomposers, right? So insects like termites and flies are actually breaking down our waste. So without them, we would have dead animals and plants accumulating in our environment. And it's for this reason that experts are sounding the alarm mm. about this recent insect decline. They're saying that the ongoing decline of this this kind of land insect tree is actually going to be catastrophic for ecological systems and for humans as well. So, in other words, uh, when they decompose things, they're literally creating new soil. They're That's creating right. the natural stuff which we would like our plants to grow in, not fake stuff that's being sprayed from some plant. That's right, and through the food chain, it affects all animals, including humans, of course. Now, what's interesting about this study is that insects that were in nature reserves only fared slightly better, and this actually shocks some of these scientists, mm. right? Because you'd think that if an insect is not, you know, in a factory farm or in an urban area, it would do better, but they only fared slightly better which kind of brings in these other environmental factors like RF electromagnetic fields which all insects are continuously exposed to right whether or not they're in a nature conservatory makes sense the, in other words the more that we use technology the more that we're harming the natural stuff that God gave us it's right. a fascinating conversation but uh yeah but that's just one. But they saying, you know, insects dying is, you know, is gonna harm, you know, the food supply. And that's that that's true. That's that's just one though. Okay? So I got an article. Some of you probably seen this on your local news stations if they you know they even displayed it, you know, Salakia. I heard you know you heard about what's going on with the uh the meat situation, you know. Cause that's that's just a little that's a little, you know. 
compared, you know, to what I'm about to read, right? It says the full supply, this is CNN business or business article, it says the full supply chain is breaking. Tyson says as plants close. It says Tyson's food is warning that millions of pounds of meat will disappear from the supply chain as the coronavirus pandemic pushes food processing plants to close, leading to product shortages in grocery stores across the country. The food supply chain is breaking, wrote boardman, board chairman John Tyson in a full-page advertisement published Sunday in the New York Times, Washington Post, and Arkansas's Democrat Gazette. It says U.S. farmers don't have anywhere to sell their livestock. He said, adding that millions of animals, chickens, pigs, and cattle will be depopulated because it closes a processing plant. So they mean the millions, these millions and millions of animals, okay, farm animals, you know, they're going to have to basically be put to death by the, uh, the farmers because since you got, you know, the closures of these, these, these stores and these different restaurants, Okay, these meats ain't going nowhere. Okay, the pro these you no know, beef, you know, chicken. Okay, it says pork, but you you tribes, you Israelites, you're not even supposed to be eating pork. Okay, but you you doing our rebellion. So the Lord did this on purpose, cause the Lord is controlling this. He's controlling. Okay, Esau, eat him to do. Okay, this because they're doing this on purpose. You know, they're doing. Basically, this engineered a uh, 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 collapse of the world economy on purpose because they want to bring in their new world order. Okay, and um, there will be limit. I'm gonna read a little bit more. I'm gonna get a scripture. It says there will be limited supply of our products available in grocery stores until we are able to reopen our facilities that are currently closed. Tyson's wrote. Tyson wrote. Okay, and the point and the thing is, you notice now. They claim, you know, people are getting the, the COVID-19 within these grocery stores. And then I seen an article, which I didn't do a video on it, but they uh they had said, I'm trying to remember what they said. You know, they was trying they was talking about how what would it, you know, they might take measures, you know, to uh do how you do uh with the rest of these stores, you basically order online and you, you come curbside pickup, you know. You can't go in the store, but you could pick it up curbside or the person will bring it out. That's what they was planning on doing with the stores. Then they brought up Draconian Law, you know. But real quick, you got this going on, right? Actually, I'll read a little bit more. Then I'm going to get this scripture. It says, Tyson's Food, which employs roughly 100,000 workers, with closed its pork plants in Waterloo, Iowa, and Logansport, Indiana last week so that workers in those facilities could be tested for the virus. It says the Waterloo plant closer came after weeks of public pressure. Production had already slowed there because of as many 2,800 workers had been calling out sick, and local health authorities linked the Tyson plant to 182 cases, nearly half of the uh, country, the county's total. Salaki says, CNN uh, recently spoke to these three employees who worked in the facility who expressed ongoing concerns that not going was done, not doing enough was done to protect them from COVID-19. One worker said that practicing social distance inside the facility was nearly impossible to do. Okay? And that's it. I'll just stop right there. I don't really need to read this. The whole point was made, you know? Okay? Um, yeah. Okay? You got this, and now they talking about, you know, a, a, a reopening, you know? KJV, slot here. Now they talking about reopening and in some in some states they you know reopening like beaches they reopening you know gyms some hair salons some barber shops you know some some just some businesses are allowed to reopen you know and they're doing that because they see uh all these Edomites okay protesting to stay at home defying the stay at home order okay these people are, are getting fed up. You know, Jake, on the other hand, you know, they, uh, which I'm going to do a video on it. You had in Chicago, you got Jake piled up in the house. You could barely move in there. They partying, okay? Knowing that, you know, you got, well, you know, this, 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 this C-19, whether, you know, they just, you know, 
making it seem, you know, as dangerous as it is. And let's say it was dangerous. You got Jake and they piled up together. So like I said, I do a, I do a video on it, you know. But um, these people, you know, that hear about this reopening, they think they're in a good case. They think everything's gonna go back to normal. It's gonna be, it's gonna return back to normalcy, and it's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna do that. Okay, and the thing is, another thing is these farmers that uh, uh that have all these crops that's destroying them, right? They're saying, you know, really, what it is is the government is stopping them, you know, from uh, from uh. Because you got another thing, you got food banks, okay, within these different, all the states, basically. You got food banks, and then they're uh, running out of food, and they need, they got a high demand for food. And they dumping, they dumping the milk out, they dump, you know, destroy, putting the uh, cabbage back in the ground. I seen one video, okay? When that could go to the food bank. Why? Because the government, okay, these elites, they want you people to starve out, okay? They want to starve you people out, Okay? You, you control the food, you control, you know, the people. Just like they say, if you control the money, you control the people. But the money, as I'm going to show you in another video, is, is basically through. Okay? This is why you're seeing what you're seeing. But anyway, this is 2nd uh 16 and 17. It says, woe is me. Woe is me who will deliver me in those days. In the days of what? Jeremiah 37. For I lost that day is great. So that none is like it. It's even the time of Jacob's trouble. This is the day that we're... Basically, in the beginning stages of it's just gonna get worse and worse as you know the days go on, as this you know shutdown continues on. Since the beginning of sorrows and great mornings and the beginning of famine, no food, and you're gonna have the famine of the world out here as well. Okay, but really food and great death, okay? Mass starvation, okay. The beginning of wars, because what's what you think is gonna come after this? And it was a actually Another video on RT, how he said, uh, damn, what did he say? I think he said, it was either he said, um, the, you know, world hunger is going to lead to what next? War. It was either world hunger or mass unemployment, but I think it was world hunger. He said, what's that going to lead to next? War. World War Three. Okay. So you see how it all ties in together. Okay. So most likely, when this thing, you know, Fully kicks in like it's starting to now, you know. That we get ready to look for World War Three to begin, cause they also still got to implement the RFID chip too, okay. That's close as well. I just did a video on that, and what Esau did was he, he I titled it the RFID chip update from tracing system to uh to RFID chip, and what they did is they turned around and changed my title and put untitled video on it. And then I tried to re uh re uh title it and it said error curse. So they wouldn't let me type RFID chip in there. Cause that's what they want to do. This is what they're planning on doing. All right? And the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? And the powers of this world, the elites, okay, they're fearing right now. So this is why they, you know, they're hurrying up and breaking down this this uh world economy, okay? So they could get this uh new world order going. And you gotta think about it. They're old as well. A lot, of, a, a lot of them are dying off of old age. Okay, so they they want to see this thing be uh, uh come to pass. You know, they want to see this thing fulfilled, right? The nineteenth verse: Behold, famine and plague, what you see in plagues and tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for a minute. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges, man. Okay, and that's mainly you Israelites. Okay, because you are the only ones according to Acts 5 and 30 that, you know, you have a Savior. You go, you're the only ones that can repent to your how about Shema Osha. But the majority of our people, all these things that's in their face, them not being able to uh, do certain things like they was two months ago. You know, you're not, you going in the store and you're still seeing, I went in the store yesterday, you're still seeing uh, shortages on stuff. Okay, but once again, the, 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 uh, su the food supply chain is breaking. It's been broken. But it's official now, you know. You still going in stores, canned goods is wiped out. Toilet paper still wiped out. You know, clean supply wiped out. Ice cream is even wiped out. Cause you got you can't forget. You had the dairy plants, they're closing a lot of their plants too. You know, with your milk and your cream. Okay? 
cottage cheese, all that. Where that come from, it's a shortage on that as well. That's what I seen yesterday. So all this is in your face, okay? You got the national national troops here, okay? That they make you think that they're here to help by passing food out, but real soon they're gonna be boots on the ground. And I got I'm gonna show you that video in a minute, okay? What's going on in Lebanon, okay? But all these things, and you still got these people, they're not uh mindful of it, you know? They still worried about when the NBA gonna come back. They worried about, you know, when the stores gonna open back up so they can sit inside and talk about nothing but folly, okay? They wonder when they could go back to the club or what they could whatever they've been doing in this world, man. Okay? The pleasures of this world. They want to earn that. Jake's still partying and everything. You know? They're not being mindful of what's going on right now. Because prophecy is speaking. It's right in your face. Okay? And that, like it says in the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter. You know, it would, it would tarry, but at the end it shall speaking. It's speaking right now. It's screaming. Okay? It says, behold, victuals, which I always say, you know, goes to food and raiment. Okay? Shall be so good, cheap upon earth. And this, and here, I say here, it's still, you can still go in the store, you know, and buy, you know, certain things. But one thing I noticed as well is I used to get, uh, you know how the stores, they give you them little, uh, for, them pamphlets on what's, you know, for sale. You could buy three, get for $10 and, you know, five for, you know, five for 10. They don't, they're not sending them out no more. Okay. They're not sending those out no more. And if you go in the store now, one thing you know is it's not a lot of sales anymore. You got to literally sp you gotta literally pay full price now. Okay? So that's that's starting to change. You're starting to see, you know, things kick in. It says that they show thank themselves to be in the good case. This is why they're not mindful of the scores because you still could do certain things. You still got a few liberties. Right? Even then shall he was grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. Okay, and this is what's happening. Okay, a lot of people as well. Some people might be going back to work, but what what is people going to buy? Okay, who's going to come and spend money when they waiting on the stimulus check that they haven't received? You know, you got people that apply, you know, for unemployment benefits all going back in like early to mid March, and still ain't get their check. They never got their first one, and then they got to apply for you know online. I mean, on benefits online and their website continues to crash because you got more and more people that's losing their jobs, that's being furloughed, okay? So, this is what's happening. So, let's say you do eat, open up the economy. You still got, you got to worry about the famine now, okay? And all these other things, okay? And how about Shema Shah is going to do more judgment on the earth, okay? Because this COVID-19 is, is not the only thing he's doing. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the others that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. And Esau Edom is that sword, according to Psalms 19 and 3. So 19 and 7, not, not 19 and 3, 7, Psalms 17 and 13. So I'm going to show you that clip of what's going on in Lebanon. Because you people actually believe, you know, you got... All right, so this is what you got. So, like, I had paused it for a second. This is what you got going on in Lebanon, okay? So, I'm going to play it, and then I'm going to read in the little comment section. A lockdown and a curfew, protesters attack a bank in the capital, Beirut. The value of their money is decreasing at an alarming rate. And on Monday, their anger at the central bank's policies and at a political class they accuse of corruption and mismanagement erupted in a wave of violence across the country. Demonstrators in Tripoli and northern Lebanon blocked roads and fought with police. Officers responded by firing rubber-coated steel bullets which injured protesters. Soldier, I swear, please stand with us. It's too much. We stand by you, but they are killing us. We can't afford anything anymore. We are starving. I sold my fishing boat for pennies. Enough is enough. For 15 days, the dollar keeps going up and down. I have a daughter in hospital. She needs an operation, and it's Ramadan. Lebanon's currency has been depreciating for weeks. 
But in the past few days, the lira has lost at least 60% of its value on the black market. The government is hinting that the central bank could be intentionally engineering the collapse as the country struggles with a lack of hard currency and its worst economic crisis in decades. The central bank is either incapable, absent or directly instigating the dramatic drop. Those in power say there's an attempt to topple the government by sabotaging financial stability. Opposition politicians who are backing the long-serving governor, Riyad Salameh, believe the ruling alliance led by Hezbollah is trying to take control of the central bank, which implements U.S. sanctions against the Iranian-backed group. Mr. Salameh is uh, perceived as uh, an American ally inside Lebanon. That does not mean that Mr. Salemi uh, is not responsible and his monetary policy was the right one. But definitely we're facing a coup. Money transfer offices and banks no longer disperse dollars. And so there it is. Okay. Basically, and most likely, they were so-called easing, you know, restrictions. But these people, what happened? They woke up to great confusion. They woke up to sore and famine. Okay. They can't, he said he sold his boat for pennies and it still ain't buying them nothing. The dollar, their currency, the lira, I believe that's what their currency is called. The currency goes up and down. So they're not, they're not able to get, you know, as much as they was when things were so-called normal. Okay. Why? Because in hyperinflation, when you print a lot of money, like you see this government doing here in this country. Okay. Nobody's working. You just print money out of thin air. Okay, that's going. What's going to come with that? It's going to come with hyperinflation. Okay, basically what you've seen happen in Venezuela, Zimbabwe, and even Lebanon now. And what's going to come with that? Okay, it's going to come sedition among men. Okay, let me get that right quick. And they said that they think this engineered. I told, I said that earlier. It is engineered. All your so-called governors and. Mayors and politicians within these different countries, they sold out. They sold you people out to the elite, okay? They're under the uh, uh, the orders of the banking families, man, okay? So they're all for this new order as well because they're all in debt. All these countries are in debt, okay, to the elite banking families, man, okay? These central banks they got set up in these, these countries, okay? So... Great confusion is coming. Okay, it's coming to you Babylonians over here in America, man. So get, you could get proud all you want. You could think everything's going back to normal all you want. You know? It's going to get worse over here. And this place, a.k.a. America, Babylon the Great, right? This place is going to get hit the worst, okay? Because Americans, they're proud, you know? Americans have never faced, you know, third world, like, you know, scenarios like these other countries have been facing. You know, because... That's not really surprising what you see in Lebanon. Well, it is surprising, but they've been facing, you know, that Mideast region, the over in the east, some of them eastern countries. You know, they've been facing, you know, situations like this, but it's just going to get worse, okay? But for Americans, you see, they can't even handle, you know, a week without being out of work, okay? So imagine all the things that's getting ready to happen, you know? I'm gonna uh, get the point. What you think gonna happen when that come, when that comes? Because it's about to come, okay? You seeing the build up to it, you know. Second edge is fifteen, and um, I started thirteen. Actually, I started uh eleven or ten. Behold, my people, the Israelites is led as a flock to the slaughter. And the slaughter is mainly Esau Edom, the ruler. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof like he's doing now. Egypt shall mourn and this um, Egypt, this is spiritual Egypt right here. This is America is talking about, by the way. It says, Egypt shall mourn and the, the uh, foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Yahweh shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting and hell and with fearful consolation. That's the farmers. 
Okay, that's already happening. There's now factories, okay, which they all tied in together anyway. It says, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. One people shall stand up and fight against another in swords in their hands. Race wars, class wars, fool wars, World War Three as well. All these things. People going to be fighting against another, okay? For there shall be sedition among men like you see in that video. That's sedition among men. And invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes in the course of their actions. So stay in their power. That's what you see in that video. You've seen it in a bunch of videos. And it's starting here in America. Okay? These Edomites that's, that's, that's fed up with this lockdown because their businesses being shut down day from day, which is they're losing money. And a lot of businesses, they're not going to be able to uh to open up shop anymore. Because these, these businesses, they was already, you know, in debt. Okay, before this thing kicked off, you had a retail apocalypse happening. So now, how much more now? Okay, and now you got these Edomites here. Okay, they still, you know, they still not, they not getting violent yet to the point where you seen in Lebanon where you, they got the military involved. But you know, it's going, it's going to get to that point, man. Okay, now you have a lot of governors. I was checking last night as well. You got a lot of governors. They um. They extending the lockdown. So every time you get close to the deadline that they set the first time, they come back and what? Oh, we're going to extend the lockdown because there's too many, you know, there's more and more cases popping up. There's more and more deaths popping up. So they continue to extend the lockdown. And what's it, all, what's it doing? It's pissing people off. Okay? So it's going to come to America, man. When you when you go to the store, like I said earlier, and you, you, uh, you know, your, your, your food is higher. And now you got people. There's another article I read last night. You have in Nevada, you know, Las Vegas, Las Vegas which is a, a, a big tourism spot, which they rely on a lot of tourists to come, you know, into that city. They're now shut. They shut the casinos, everything down, of course. But I read an article on people. The lady said she only had half gas a tank. I mean, half half gas in her tank. She only had... um. What she said, she only had six eggs in the refrigerator. She had slices of bread, a half gallon of milk, and $22 in her account. Her husband lost her job, and her daughter, she was, um, she's, uh, uh I think she's special ed or something. And she needs certain medicine to stop her from vomiting, and she can't afford it. And she only has $22. See, you wait, because this is, this is millions of people. This is not just that one lady, it's millions of people out here, you know? That's been living their life like it's golden, knowing that they didn't have the money to afford anything. Okay? And they see that this thing's not getting better. So what's gonna happen? They just gonna take power into their own hands. They not gonna regard what they ain't gonna wanna hear what Donald Trump or Anthony Fauci or you know the mayor of their city got to say. They just gonna start tearing shit up like you seen in Lebanon. Okay, and many other places, because Lebanon is not the only one. 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. That's martial law. This this light martial law we're dealing with right now. You can't go to certain places. You gotta wear a face mask, okay? People wearing gloves, okay? This is what's happening. You getting citations for not applying to the stay at home orders, okay? They just gave the governor here. He just gave eighty people just got citated, and last time it was what two hundred eighty, I believe. You know. Because they they so called violated uh 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 the uh the the uh the stay at home order and was businesses getting it too, you know? Because a lot of people another thing a lot of people are doing here is a lot of these people that run these businesses they're losing so much money that just they're just defying you know what the the mayor or the governor says to shut the business down and they're just like to hell with it I'm losing money this is my only way I can make money, you know I'm gonna open my shop anyway you know a lot of people are doing that. Okay, so these people, it's only a matter of time before these people snap and lose it, man. Okay? The 18th verse, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, men shall be afraid. And this is why this is happening. Because you people walk in great pride. You don't reverence a higher power. And if you do reverence a higher power, it's not Yahweh by Shema It's these false deities that Esau Edom has set up as a stumbling block out here to you masses, especially you Israelites, man. You, you, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, okay? Then you walk around like, 
You're untouchable, okay? You got everything by your own means. And now, Yahweh by Hashem is showing you people that you don't have control over your life. Everything you got was re was really from him, okay? The the power that Esau got, his military, all that was uh was from on high, man. A higher power gave him all that. He didn't get all that by himself, okay? But because you people are proud, you don't you don't reverence that, you know? You don't acknowledge that. So now you you're being trouble on all on all levels, okay? 19th verse. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. Meaning what? Any weapon of destruction. A gun. Okay? A s actual sword. A chain. Whatever these people going to use out here, man. There's going to be a lot. Because you got a, a firearm sales is sky high, right? It's skyrocketing. They are out of bullets. Nine millimeters. You know? So these people are about to... It's about to go down. Because everything else in this chapter so far is coming to pass. So this is what we about... This 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 that prophecy right now that's, that's got to... That's getting ready to come to pass eventually. Okay, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation because ain't gonna be no more food in these stores real soon. And it's starting now with the you know the meat section. And you watch, once the meat's gone, what you think they're gonna say next? They're gonna be like, Well, now the vegetables they're starting to rot. So there's gonna be a shortage on vegetables. Now the fruit is starting to rot, so there's gonna be a shortage on fruit. You know, now the cows, we had to kill them off, okay. Because we didn't have enough food to feed them or because of what's going on with the store closures. So now we don't have no more milk. And then eventually it's, gonna, it's just going to be no more food in the stores. And then if there is food in the stores, like you saw in that video, your dollar, okay? Because they're printing so much damn money, it's gonna, hyperinflation is getting ready to kick in. So you're not even going to be able to afford, okay? You're not even going to be able to afford a, a gallon of milk, a thing of bread. You know, that was what? How much is a bread originally? Like three, two? You know, two dollars, two two dollars and something cent or three, whatever it is, you gonna be paying ten, fifteen, twenty dollars for a loaf of bread, man. Okay. The scriptures say the full storehouse shall be the song place shall be a pair unsown. The full storehouse shall be found empty, man. Okay. So what's that gonna cause? It's gonna cause people to you know go insane and loot and burn stores on fire, man. Them trucks ain't gonna be coming in no more. And when there's no more food in the stores, what's gonna happen next? Home invasions, okay? Robberies, okay? Let me see if I can find that. You know? Second edition, the 16th chapter. You know? Robberies, murder, okay? Cannibalism, because that's coming back too. You know? These apocalyptic movies that, that Esau puts out here and there, that's going to happen, but it's going to be way worse than what Hollywood shows you, because Hollywood... The scriptures, you know, the scriptures say, who know, know the, who in the book of wisdom of Solomon, for who can know the Lord's way? Okay. None of us can. We don't because we're earth, we're earthly vessels. Only he knows how bad and how terrible he's going to make this thing out. You know, um, let me see. I can't. I don't even remember where it's at. Um, captivity. It's going to be real bad out here. Extremely bad. It's my car going off. Right? Yep, there it is. Second edge is, uh, right? Uh, 1646. Sounds similar. It's right? for strangers shall reap their fruits. Because you also got people, you got a lot of Edomites talking about grow your own. You no, know, they trying to buy seeds and grow their own food. That's only going, that's only going to, um, last but for so long, man. Okay? And another thing is, they got legislation in the uh, root to take them plants up, man. To destroy your crops, man. Okay, you're not supposed to be doing it. This is why certain states is banning, you know, vegetable seeds and everything. Okay, and really, you're not even gonna have enough time to grow, uh, 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 uh you know, plants. And the time we coming into, where people gonna be robbing each other and killing each other in the streets, blood's gonna be in the streets. You ain't gonna have time to grow plants, grow your own food. 
And if you do grow your own food, people is coming to get that, man. These mobs, these gangs that's going to be ganging up out here, they're going to be they're gonna be coming to get that. It says, for strangers shall reap their fruits and then spoil their goods and overthrow their houses and take their children captive. So they're going to be taking your children captive. Some, some people going to be holding your children for ransom. You know, some people are going to be, you know, just take your children and, and boil them and cook them and eat them. Because a lot of you women, as is prophesied in Lamentation, the fourth chapter, a lot of you women going to be doing that, man. Okay? A lot of y'all going to be doing that. And um, that's what's about to happen out here. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. Okay? And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their cities, their houses, possess their possessions, and their own persons. Okay? So, wow, this is crazy. Another car alarm going off. And anyway, that's what's getting ready to happen, man. So it's like you can, you really can't prep for this thing. Only way you can prep is spiritually, okay? If you're how about Shem is dealing with you, you have to be an Israelite. And really, the elect, okay? You also got the men and women, you know, the one-third, the great multitude that do believe, Okay? So the rest of you people out here just, just finish, man. And we coming into this whether you believe it or not. Because it's in your face now. You know? But all this is coming because great pride has been, you know, has been sown on the planet Earth. And as a lot of you jakes are prideful as hell, man. And you really, we don't have nothing to be prideful as a nation. Look at us. We're on the bottom. We got heathens ruling over us. Okay? We got to go to them for the one of all things. Okay? Look at them. But our people, they learned the way they eat. And so a lot of them, they're not going to uh, snap out of it. So let me read this. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 65 verse 11 says, But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for a troop, for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Therefore, I number you to the sword, which that sword, once again, is Esau. Okay, his martial law troops, whatever he got out here, man. And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter, man. Because when I call, ye did not answer. When I speak, ye did not hear. But they evil before my eyes, and they choose that wherein I delight not. And this is the Lord talking to you Israelites, man. To the two-thirds of our people that's not going to repent, okay. And somewhat change to the best of their ability. They're going to keep doing what they want to do. They're going to keep, you know, smoking, eating abominable foods. They're going to keep doing what they want to do. You know, you can't tell me nothing. That's how the attitude they got. So the Lord, going, he's going to deliver you to that slaughter, man. He's going to deliver you, hand you over to these plagues that's getting ready to go full-blown on the planet Earth right now. Okay? Therefore, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Man, this was getting ready to happen. You two-thirds, you know? Because like the scriptures also say, uh, Psalms 110 and 3, it says, In the day of thy power, thy people shall be willing. That's when Jake, all, the, all most of our people, they're going to want to uh, all of them automatically seek Yahweh by Shema Osha. That's when they're going to want to change and get right. But it's going to be too late. The Lord going to hide his face from you, man. Okay? Because the Lord knows your heart. He knows that you just, you know, you just, uh, 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 you're going to try to, you know, change at the last minute because he's finally just destroying you. So, you know, when this thing take place, he's saying his servants going to eat. But the rest of y'all, y'all going to be hungry, man. You're going to be thirsty, man. To the point where you're going to be killing your neighbors, killing your loved ones, eating other people. It's going to get bad like that. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart. And how? And shall how for vexation of spirit. Because a lot of people are going to turn to the same government that's doing this. And he he's not going to help you. He's going to destroy you furthermore, man. So, you're going to be vexed really bad. It's like we're vexed right now. You know? You're going to be real vexed. You escape one uh, plague, and then you fall right into another trap. Okay? This is how, how about Shema Shah has this set up. So, you can't, if you're destined for destruction, you can't, you can't deliver yourself. You know, you can't escape. You know? If the Lord got out for you to be judged, he's going to judge you. 
And uh, ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen, for the Lord shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. So this is what's getting ready to happen. Okay? That he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God, Yahweh of truth, and that he sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth, because the former troubles are forgotten, because they are hid from my eyes. Okay? So... You know, if you have that that remnant that the Lord has destined, you know, for uh salvation, you know, that's destined for uh, you know, protection and covering, okay, you're gonna be straight. But if anybody outside that, like you are part of the two thirds of our people, you damn if you you are a uh, Edomite or any other heathen nation, you just you're through. Okay? You basically just waiting out your judgment right now. Okay? You getting judged and waiting for more severe punishment from on high, man. Okay? So it will behoove you, you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, if you haven't done so, repent right now because the Lord's hand is still stretched out. Okay? You can still, you know, you can still go out for exercise and, and, and walk and all these things. But real soon, you ain't going to be able to do nothing. Everything's going to be stripped from you. Okay? Even your ability to eat. Okay? So you still got time to do it now. It's still... The uh, what you call it, the uh, calm before the storm, you know. But if you if you still cho choose, you no, know, I ain't gonna do that. Then oh well, that's on you, you know. Really, it's it's, it's your how about Shemal Shah. He's gonna put the spirit on you to repent. But if not, oh well. So uh, that's it. Point was made, you know. The how right is out, you know. This was Elephant call her Lord like your how about Shemal Shah. Papa Kasha, a papa, 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 a papa,